It's Darcy Lacouve reporting live here from Mobile World Congress 2015, and I'm delighted to be at the ARM booth again with a favorite of mine, <laughs> Mr. James Bruce, who is the director of Mobile at ARM. How are you today, sir? Oh, I'm very well, and it's great to speak to you again, Darcy. Thank you very much for your time, sir. So, we've seen a lot of great things here at Mobile World Congress, uh, 14 nanometer SOC from Exynos mm -hmm. and the Galaxy S6, and a lot of other exciting stuff. Uh, what, are you, what are you most impressed with at the show so far? Oh, that's actually a really tough question. And I think the sort of answer to that is, you know, no matter what price point you're at, there's been some great handsets. I mean, obviously the Galaxy S6 with the 14 nanometer ARM SOC is very impressive at the premium. And then you can go all the way down to some of the handsets that we've got that we're showing, like a $30 Spreadstrom handset with a Quad A7 or a $65 uh, Quad A53 LT handset with Mali T720. So I think that's a really important message from MWC now, is you know no matter what price point you're buying your handset at, you do have some great choices, great performance, and you know it's a great time to uh, buy a smartphone. I couldn't agree more. So just taking a look back, you know, we spoke uh, last year at Mobile World Congress, mm. you know, it was a Galaxy S5, which yeah. was debuted around that time. What kind of performance gains are we looking at towards the upper tier of the market, upper end of the market, year over year, you think? So, I mean, it's always a sort of um, difficult one to answer directly, but I mean, certainly the performance gains are over 40% uh, year on year. Some years it can actually be almost uh, doubling, some years it perhaps is only 20 or 30%. But I think the really important thing to emphasize is when you're looking at the handsets, it's not just about performance, it's about the overall user experience. Yeah. So if you have the sort of Galaxy S5 and the Galaxy S6 in your hand, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is just the changes in the mechanics, mm -hmm. the uh, quality of the display, and also the camera. I mean, you've suddenly gone from a sensor that wasn't optically image stabilized to a sensor that is. Mm -hmm. So it's all those changes combined that deliver that new user experience to the consumer. You know, it's really interesting that you say that. Now, I take a look back, you know, the, part, the ARM partner ecosystem is so vast and it continues yeah. to grow. You know, you, all the way from Rockchip, all the way up to Qualcomm, you know, Exynos, we have the rise of high silicon yeah. out of Huawei, and even LG now is uh, yeah. participating in SOC architecture. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about, uh, about that? Yeah, so I think what you're seeing is we have lots of partners um, in the ARM ecosystem, and in the mobile space, we have a great range of companies. And I think it's really important from the perspective of the consumer because if you just have one chip supplier, you know, all the handsets are really just going to be variations on the theme. When you've got all these different companies competing against each other, trying to do things different, that's when you get the diversity in smartphones, those differences, and that's where it's great to be a consumer. So we're quite familiar, you know, with ARM reference designs, you know, your leadership within IP yeah. itself. But can you just talk a little bit about the GPU space? Because we were just over with Imagination, and obviously Apple licenses their GPU architecture. Uh, and now the rise of MIPS, which is supported by Android 5.0, Lollipop, and beyond. Um, but if you could just talk a little bit about uh, ARM's Mali GPU architecture relative uh, to PowerVR for Imagination, uh, and, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the future as well. So I think the important thing is really to sort of just talk about, you know, the various Mali devices that we've seen at the show. And I think it's really impressive now that uh, Mali is now the number one licensed uh, GPU IP. Uh, it's shipped over a billion units. And I think there's some great devices. You're seeing sort of T720 at sort of $65, uh, T760 based devices starting at 300. And I'm sure as you talked about, there's some premium devices using the Mali T760. And I think certainly from the perspective of the actual use of these phones, I think the important thing is really to look at the capabilities of the GPU and certainly as an Android user, what I'm excited about is as Android 3.0, sorry, as OpenGLES 3.0, 3.1 comes into the market, how the games developers take advantage of that. And also you're seeing sort of supporting technologies. For example, we had the Enlighten announcement yesterday um, with the new lighting technology, having that great um, and just using the term eye candy, you know, that big change in your gaming capabilities in the handset, I think it's going to be a really interesting year to be a gamer on the smartphone. Uh, so, I mean, we continue to see massive performance gains. You know, the utility and the performance of these devices 
at all ends of the pricing spectrum are just continuing to improve. How close do you think we are to achieving truly desktop-like performance in a mobile device, to having the one device that can be the primary and the all? So, I mean, obviously, if you're, uh, let's say, a professional designer or if you're using AutoCAD, then <laughs> you're, you're still going to use, I'll, I'll give that to desktops. But, I mean, as a typical consumer or as a, someone who's, you know, really just someone who uses Office on their desktop or laptop, I think we're almost at that point now. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see over the next couple of years how the form factors and the connectivity changes to take advantage of that increase in performance on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. Well, another exciting corollary to that is uh, the launch of DDR4 RAM in a mobile device. You know, industry first, the Galaxy yeah. S6 is bringing in, and we spoke with Micron, and it looks like uh, they're packing a lot more performance finally. And That's yeah, absolutely, and I mean, low-power DDR4 is vital for delivering that uh, user experience. And I think it's, it's very good that you brought that up because quite often when you talk about um, smartphone performance, you talk about things like CPU, clock speeds, GPU, but you really do need that memory subsystem to actually transfer the data to these compute units, and low-power DDR4 is that next stage. Interesting. So we're going to be speaking again next year. Oh. Um, but just so perhaps we could have a little bit of a look into the future, are we going to be seeing more versions of a, the big little uh, type design, or are there, is there anything exciting that Arm is working on that you could shed some light on for the future? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Big Little is going to progress. I, I really look at 2015 as a year of the Big Little. Um, you've obviously got these Octa 53s where they're effectively doing two clusters, one running very fast, one running very efficiently. And I think um, we've obviously announced Cortex-A72, but if I was to give it to you in one soundbite, I think it's more of the same but better. You're going to see that continuous innovation that's between our partners and also that, should we say, friendly competition that drives them to do better. Exactly. And that, that's a nice thing. I come, I'll come to MWC 2016 and there'll be lots of new handsets that I'll be really excited about. And that's the great thing about the sort of smartphone business is that every year you come to the show and you're always excited. Truly. Well, I, I mean, there's a, not a lot that we can discuss more. Obviously, the rise of Embed, you know, Arm is still continuing to work with a lot of developers and opening up the ecosystem, providing the resources so that people can, you know, really grow mobile technology. And with the rise of wearables, even though it's still a relatively small product category now, probably double or triple in size by the time we have a conversation next year. And that's the great thing about the ARM ecosystem. If you actually look at ARM, what we do is we, we're actually quite boring. We supply important <laughs> IP and it's our silicon partners and OEMs who actually come out with this cool new stuff that sometimes you just don't even think about. And that's why it's so exciting to work for ARM because you know two years down the line you see stuff and wow, I never even thought about it. Yeah. Well, I want to say a huge thank you for your time. It's always a privilege and an honor to be able to speak with you, James. So, And it's, it's always great speaking to you, Darcy. Thanks so much. Sure. All right, Star Slack of A reporting live here from MWC 2015, signing off.